This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Learn to think. This right here, what looks like a grape with a sinus infection, is actually a baby elephant, just about ready to, well, be dropped from five feet. And has start things off with a bang <laughs> to the head. It's an exciting event for everyone. The whole herd gathers around and celebrates. It's quite cute and loud, but they should celebrate. That baby's been up in there for almost two years, so when it comes out, it's fairly well baked. It takes a minute or two to get used to its new surroundings. I mean, he's not in Kansas anymore. You know, if Kansas were a mucus-filled placental sac inside the uterus of an elephant. But in no time at all, this baby is standing up on its own. First things first, it's guided to the nipples. We should all be so lucky. And there they are. <laughs> Could benefit from a dab of lotion by the looks of it. For the next three to four years, the baby will nurse in its mother's care, supported by the other females in the herd. Sometimes it takes a village. These elephant babies can sometimes be a handful. Look at this one, it's throwing an all-out tantrum. Probably just passed by a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> that demon robotic mouse that calls the children. <laughs> But it's a good thing that there's some time for the baby to learn how to elephant. You gotta get your feet right, but there's more subtle things like caring for your skin. Elephants have quite the beauty regimen. Luckily, they use foundation and powders that are quite cheap and readily available. Throw a bit of dirt on the back, maybe a mud bath. It's worth it, because listen, this is no ordinary skin. Now up close, it doesn't seem like their routine is addressing the wrinkles. But in this case, the wrinkling is on purpose. Elephant skin doesn't just have wrinkles, there's wrinkles on the wrinkles. And the closer you look, the more you find. Unlike our skin, which flakes off when it dies, elephant skin sticks around and forms thicker and thicker layers as they age. And this wrinkled mess can do some magic tricks. Look at that. It's amazing. It's like a giant elephant-shaped sponge. And having skin that can hold on to water like that is very important. Elephants can get hot, very hot. They have the highest ratio of volume to surface area of any land animal. Too much body and not enough skin surface to cool off. They don't have sweat glands except for a couple between their toes. Those aren't gonna do shit. so they have some other tricks. For one, they have these little hairs all over their body, not like a luxurious mane. More like the smattering follicular landscape of a testicle. One question though is why do they have hair at all? Doesn't hair make you warmer? Now you might think that it's just evolutionary leftovers. Sort of a slowly balding woolly mammoth. But it turns out that when hair density drops below a certain threshold, having hair switches from something that keeps you warm to something that helps you cool off. And it appears that that's what's happening. The hairs themselves help get rid of the heat. Their giant ears also act as heat exchangers. Waving them around cools down the blood that runs through them. I know what you're thinking, naughty bits. Those veins there remind me of the veins in a human testicle, which also shed heat to keep sperm from overheating. Elephant testicles are inside the body, in basically the hottest place. There's something called the hot testicle hypothesis. It's a good band name. It says that elephants might not get cancer because they've evolved extra proteins that are constantly protecting and repairing heat-damaged sperm. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Wait, is this one flipping us off? Oh, we're totally getting flipped off by an elephant trunk right about Nur. But let me tell you, those trunks are quite something. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> you know, in the womb, they actually have an upper lip that's separate from their nose. But those fuse together to form the trunk. Here, try pushing your upper lip forward while flaring your nostrils. Hold that, right? Well, nothing to do with an elephant, but you look like an idiot. <laughs> the trunk is made up of connective tissue, a tiny bit of fat, and tens of thousands of muscles that go the long way, the short way, and roundsy boutsy. Much like the tongue, the trunk contains no bones and no cartilage, but by coordinating those muscles, it can do all sorts of things. It's quite strong, especially nearer up to the top. You can see one working out here. Must be a warm-up set because they can lift up to 700 pounds, which is the equivalent of 701 pound weights. For those of you who are into the gym things, the trunk is also quite stretchy stretchy. The skin and connective tissue on the top surface of the trunk is stretchier than the bottom, while the bottom is stiffer, stronger, and more grabby grabby. The trunk is lined with special sensory hairs called vibrissae. On the bottom of the trunk, they form rows on either side. The science hippies think that this helps them balance things in the curl of their trunk, like this watermelon. But the tip? The tip has the most hairs and is the most sensitive, as tips are wont to be. Depending on the species, the trunk ends in one or two things that basically act like fingers. And I'm sure that science hippies are tempted to fake this research with hand puppets. 
The combination of a flexible trunk and these fingerlings means that they can pick things up in all sorts of ways, depending on their shape and how big they are. And those finger parts are capable of some very fine movements. Look at this one peeling a banana. Not, not exactly how I do it, it gets the job done. And look at this one, delicately picking up a tortilla without breaking it. Now the trunk isn't a hollow tube, those two nostrils run down the length of it. And that means it can get sucky sucky, which provides yet another option for picking things up. But can also function a bit like a straw. Not an all the way straw though, it is a nose after all. And you know what it feels like to get a nose full of water all the way back. So when it sucks, it doesn't suck all the way. It holds whatever is sucked, and then it can squirt it back out into an appropriate orifice, or wherever the f it wants, really. I know you like to learn. You're here learning about elephants, aren't you? Well, Brilliant.org is an amazing free and easy way to learn about a whole lot more. Math, data science, computer science. It feels good to learn, and it helps a lot when a five-year-old keeps asking why, or your boss for that matter. Brilliant has thousands of interactive courses, from basic to advanced, on topics that are interesting and important today, like how to think in code. There's a new How Technology Works course, where you can learn things like what actually makes a password strong, and why yours probably sucks. You get to learn all this at your own pace, with content that fits your skill level and interests. And listen, if you get stuck, there's hints and explainers so that you really understand a concept before you move on. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash zayfrank or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Brilliant has been a long-time sponsor of this show, because I like what they do. Check them out today. Where were we? Oh, right. Elephants eat sticks and leaves and other crap a sensible person might rake up and throw in the green bin for pickup. Now, if you've tried, you'd know that it's not all that easy to eat those things. Imagine if the toothpick was the appetizer. But they have some good equipment. African elephants and male Asian elephants have tusks, which are their incisors. Female Asian elephants will often have little tiny incisors sticking out, called tushes. Oh, it's called a tush. Tusks and tushes don't help with the chewing, but they can scrape some bark off now and then. The business end of the mouth is in the back. Elephants have some big-ass molars back there, about the size of a brick. This is one, even though it looks like several. They chew all that woody crap front to back, not side to side like we do. And those teeth wear down. Luckily, they have six sets throughout their lifetime. When a new molar comes in, it doesn't come from below. It comes from behind. The old worn-down tooth is pushed forward and then it breaks off in segments while the roots are reabsorbed. Once the last set of teeth comes in, that's it. Those eventually wear down, and if the elephant lives long enough, it'll die. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, they chew everything up into a pulp, and then that pulp gets fermented inside of their body. That creates gas. Told you. But the whole process only extracts about 20% of what went in the other side. The resulting dung still has some nutritional value. It's a predigested morsel for whoever wants another go at it. And many do, including other elephants. Ones that don't have the patience to wait for it to drop. So they get after it, so to speak. I mean, we blurred it, but imagine a snake trying to escape into an elephant's butt, Jerry. You only did half the analogy. That doesn't help. The snake has to go into something different, like a... No, not a different animal's butt, Jerry. You re you're really not getting it. Butt trunks are... Sorry, butt trunks are also used to communicate. They can be noisy little bastards and make all sorts of sounds. There's the classic trumpeting sound, which sounds a bit more like a lion trapped in a tuba. They can drop that down low and it sounds like a giant horse that's not impressed. By pinching the front end together, they can go up high. Sounds like demons. <laughs> Likely because they're making two pitches at once, one from each nostril. And if they pinch it real hard, it can sound like the squeak fart of a birthday balloon. Now, if they squeeze further back and inflate the trunk near the head, they can make a sound like a coffee machine that just ran out of water. There's this sound, which is very impolite. We won't speak of it again. Sometimes they push air into the sinus cavities in front of their face and make these strange inside throbbing sounds. And at least one elephant has figured out that if it modifies the shape of its mouth while making sounds with its trunk, it can mimic the vowel sounds of human words. This one's saying chowa, or good in Korean. Yeah. 
Not bad, is it? Now, all of this is well and good if you live in groups like females do. But if you're a male, you might be alone and miles away from other elephants. For that, they got a whole nother system, and it starts with their feet. Elephants stand tippy-toe, with the back of the foot supported by a high heel of fat. Their toe area and their heel area have nerves in them that are particularly sensitive to touch. Both of these features help the elephant feel and listen to vibrations in the ground. Look, this one's listening to see if something's afoot <laughs> with his foot. <laughs> By stomping their feet or making low rumbles, elephants can create seismic waves that travel for miles through the ground, which is apparently louder than a man having a tantrum. When they reach another elephant, those waves travel up through the fat and through the bones of the elephant and up to its ears. The bones inside of the elephant's ear are especially large and tuned for these low-frequency vibrations. In this way, elephants can not only hear other elephants miles away, but they can figure out the direction, too. Sometimes, a group of elephants will even arrange themselves like a compass to better figure out where the sound is coming from. Pretty smart, right? Well, elephants are smart, at least according to them. They're also narcissists. Elephants have some big brains. Look at that one. It's dead. They have roughly three times the neurons of a human brain, but they only have a third of the neurons that we have in the thinky-thinky parts. But you get what you get, and they do seem to know how to use what they have. I mean, look at this. They can move objects and use them to reach high up food. If you put one in front of a mirror, it gets all into it. But the science hippies wanted to test if the elephant knew that it was looking at itself. So they painted an X on its face, and look at that. The elephant touched it. It knows what's up, and it was totally checking itself out in the mirror. They seem to be aware of their own bodies. If you ask them to give you a handle that's attached to a mat that they're standing on, they understand that they have to move off of it first. And they can do teamwork, too. You give them a two-pulley situation where you can't go it alone and they wait for another elephant to help out. Here's a variation on that, where there's still two pulleys but just one basket of food. <laughs> Look at that, the big one takes it home for himself. What a dick. I mean, at this point, you're just f***ing with elephants. One of the areas where elephants have a lot more neurons than humans is in the part of the brain that deals with smelling. They're very good at it, and they can remember smells for a very long time. Here's an elephant casually walking by a pile of crap from an elephant she doesn't know. Gives it a sniff, as is the custom, and moves on. Now here's the same basic setup, but the turd is from her daughter, who she hasn't seen in 12 years. Now when she takes that whiff, she gets all excited. <sighs> Goes back to check it out, ears flapping. It's like recognizing the perfume of your first crush. I mean, if they wore shit. You can do this experiment, by the way, and you don't need 12 years. Just go to grandma's, take a shit in the living room, and hide in the closet. You'll know she loves you if she's happy to find it. Anyway, the daughter and mother were reunited, by the way. Be pretty messed up if they didn't do that. Now, starting at around 20 or 30 years, male elephants will sometimes go into something called must. Their hormones go crazy and they get all horny and aggressive. Sort of like intense puberty, but it gets very leaky. <laughs> like they're peeing, for example. Normally, elephants pee like this. Very straightforward, to-the-point peeing. But in must, they often don't drop their penis all the way and it comes out in a dribble. And look at that, he's thwapping it with his tail. It all helps to spread the scent of this sexy time urine. And if that wasn't enough, they start leaking out of these temporal glands on the side of their head. That stuff stinks too, and they waft it around by flapping their ears. These smells actually have information about how fit and strong the male elephant is. Now, females might use this to judge the quality of a potential mate, but other males use it to figure out who's most likely stronger and would win in a fight. And that way, you can ideally avoid the fight altogether. One issue here is that females are... Jerry, why is this one kicking his penis? Is it part of must? What if it's not? Don't show it, it'll give people ideas. Well, it could become one of those TikTok challenges, and then everyone's kicking their dicks, Jerry. You want that? All right, let's move on. One issue here is that females are only down for it in short windows of time, and males and females don't live in the same herds. So it's always a booty call, literally. Both females and males have a hookup rumble that can travel for miles. Here you can see science hippies playing a female estrus call and a confused male trying to figure out where it's coming from. Apparently that's what you do with a PhD, catfish and elephant. Now when they do find each other, it's all over fairly quickly. A lot of build up and stinky urine for about 45 seconds of payoff. And it's a bit of a clumsy affair. Not really built for the Kama Sutra. But it is cute that the male rests his trunk on the female. 
And sometimes, like in this shot, if the female is inexperienced or the male is particularly large, other females will gather around to give a bit of support and comfort. It's very sweet. <laughs> you can do it, Ethel. You're doing great. And soon enough, a new little elephant baby will be born. What, Jerry? How would they do it? Oh, you mean the kick your own dick challenge. Jerry, you don't even ask questions like that. I'm telling you, the young kids are so impressionable that you get, you know, Irish dancing. That's what it would look like, Jerry. You know that sort of the hacky sack kick they do? I mean, if you practice that, I'm sure you could kick your own dick. No, Jerry, that's cheating. You can't have somebody else kick your dick. That, it's not even the same challenge. And I bet they already did it. Oh, that's a good question, Jerry. Can you be lying down while you do it? Like you're in a sit-up pose and you use your heel? See, that's interesting because it's exercise. Forget hit classes, Jerry. These days it's all kick your dick.